it in your belly. You are doing the amp up and you're doing it fierce. You're doing it so well. Well done, everybody. If you are taking up our offering tonight, offering collectors, you can go ahead and get in place. And we're going to kick off our to be continued offering with a little bit of our a little uh, to be continued uh, video fail. Who's watched a video fail series before? Yeah, yeah. You you've watched videos before. Do you ever do you ever watch on TikTok or on Reels? And you see a video that says, wait for it. And then you watch it on a loop and there was nothing that happened. And it gets you mad because you're like, I waited for it. Or you wait for it because you're actually excited because you want to see what you're waiting for. Well, let's do this. As we pass our offering bags and they go through the aisles, you can go ahead and remember that we believe that our offering uh, can continue conversations. Our offering can go towards filming um, projects just like where the river divides and they can continue stories. They can continue kingdom work and offer responses for students like you to get involved with what things are happening in the kingdom right now in Kenya, in Russia, in America, and right in your back door. So, I want to kick off with a series. And it's fail videos. So, here's the thing. We're going to play a video and we're going to stop it right before it gets interesting and we got to see if you guys know how it's going to continue. Because it's to be continued. So here's our first video, okay? To be continued. So this guy, okay, we're gonna start this video. Will he complete the backflip? Or will he not? Yes or no? Okay. Who thinks he will complete the backflip? There's hope in the world. You are optimists. Well done. Who thinks he will not complete the backflip? <laughs> yes. This video shall continue. Let's see. did do it for him. So yeah, it's up in the air. Okay, okay. Let's go to another one. Okay. To be continued, this woman jumping. Okay, there's a lot going on. It's like, will she, won't she? It's a lot. You know, you could think it's clickbait at this point. It's like, okay, wait for it. Is she going to jump? Is she not going to jump? We want to see if the lady's going to jump. We want to see if it's going to be a flop. 
We want to see if the crab's going to escape. We want to see what happens next. We want to see what God can do with our stories. It's, it's way bigger about the crab. It's way bigger than the lady jumping or the guy backflipping and possibly hurting, you know, C25, 26, you know, in your back. Uh, I don't know, chiropractory. I know that these numbers are really small. I'm not sure what numbers these are, but they're bigger. Um, but we know that videos and screen content, when we love something and we hear stories, we share it. And for $5, we're asking, will you be a part of sharing stories with students just like yourselves? I'm going to pray over our offering, and then we are going to head into our time of worship. Offering collectors, if you're still collecting offering, would you collect those bags and take them to the back? Okay, would you take them to the back? And if the bags are still going down your aisles, please don't mow people down. But let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for the opportunity to laugh. We thank you that you are a creative God, that you are a fun God, that you, um, you do so much for us, that you, that you provide this beautiful weather and dodgeball and zip line and all of the creative, amazing things we've got to experience this week. But all of the time to pause and reflect and have great conversations and to hear your word, Lord, and to get to know somebody better, and most of all, to get to know you better. Lord, we pray over this offering that it would go towards film content, that it would go towards um, a team and stories and testimonies that testify to your truth, Lord, that students could hear and be captivated by everything that you have in store. Lord, we thank you for the students that feel inspired to give. And Lord, we pray that just like they saw yesterday and what we will continue to see um, through video content, Lord, we, we pray that you do big things. We pray a blessing over this offering and uh, we just give it to you and we thank you for the rest of this night. And we pray that our hearts and our ears are open to what you have in store. Um, we thank you and we praise you. And in your name we pray. Amen.
point of view, you're Saul's horse that also saw Jesus appear on the road to Damascus. Breaking news. Something has happened on the road to Damascus today. We have been talking to eyewitnesses all day, and here comes by one right now. Oh, hello, sir, sir, come over here. What? Sir, hello, News Talk 316. Oh, we'd love to interview you. Hi, hi, what's your name? Oh, um, hi, I am, uh, I'm Saul's horse. Hi, hi. Um, yes, yeah. we'd love to talk to you uh, and question you about something crazy that happened today on the road to Damascus. Um, Longtime Christian beater upper Saul, uh, uh, you're his horse. Can you tell us about what happened? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. So me and Saul, we go way back, man. Like um, we've been beating up Christians for like years now. So um, basically, what happened was. We were on the road to Damascus, right? And we were going to like imprison some people because they're Christian because like we're into that sort of thing. And, um, and so we were on our way and, uh, you know, out of nowhere, dude, this light comes out of nowhere. Like literally. And then this um, booming voice starts saying out of the sky, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me, man? You know? Just a voice. And it's just a voice out of the sky. And so I'm freaking out, you know? Yeah. And, and so what I do, I buck Saul off because I'm scared, you know? And, and yeah. I hide under tumbleweed over here. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not super proud of that, but I figured the voice was more into Saul than it, it had more beef with him than me, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the voice told us he was Jesus. Oh, Jesus? Jesus Je was on the road or in the sky? No, no, yeah. So it was the Jesus. It was like in the light, you know? Oh. The Jesus. And wow. he was like saying to, to Saul all this stuff. But the crazy thing is he was giving us some instruction to go into town. Go into town and like um, basically we'll find some instruction there. But, you know, he gets up and plot twist, dude. Saul's blind. Can't blind. see a thing. Saul's yeah. blind. Was anybody else injured in the accident? No. So here's the crazy thing, you know. I, we, uh, so there were some other people here, right? And they didn't see anything. Nothing. Nothing, dude. Like, it was the weirdest. Like, me and Saul saw the Jesus. But... It looked to them like we just walked into a spider web and we're freaking out. Oh, I hate when and that. And so they were just, yeah. So they were just looking Happen. at us. Yeah. You know, like Dora the Explorer does. Oh, yeah. um, when she's just staring at you, asking where to go. Oh, yeah. Just blinking. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. So, like, Dora, I'm not a part of the riding. I don't know where you're going. Yes, I don't know exactly. where you put your map. And so the weird thing is we, um, so yeah. they led us into town. And so we get to this house, and my boy Paul, dude, he's, he's blind. He can't see anything, Whoa. you know. And so we get to the house, and he doesn't eat for like three days. He doesn't drink anything for like three, three days. And I'm starting to freak out. And then this dude named um, Anna or something like, um, I think his name's Anaphylactic. Yeah. I'm pretty um, sure. Um, one second. Um, my producer is saying it's pronounced Ananias. Ananias. It's pronounced Ananias. Okay. I don't think so, but okay. So Anna, um, he comes up to us and he like prays for Saul. And uh, he says he has the Holy Spirit now, dude. And then, um, and then he, he um, put his hand on his eyeballs, dude. And <clears throat> these scales start falling off his, off his eyeballs, man. And um, I had to get out of there because... I don't do scales. Yeah, so. Oh, so is that, is that why you're back at the scene? Like, so you left Saul there? And oh, now no, no, no. So um, when I bucked off Paul, I dropped my chapstick. So I was coming back to see if I could find my, 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 my lips get chapped. 
Paul, so you said Paul, not Saul. Yeah, oh yeah, dude. So I'm, I'm, I forgot. So um, with his new life, he wanted to like change his name. So he's oh. like Saul, now he's Paul, you know? Oh. Yeah, and so it's crazy, dude. It's been wild. Like he, the Holy Spirit healed his eyes. He was like eating and drinking and now we're just chilling. And so he's saying like, you know, we're not going to beat up Christians anymore or whatever. And I was like, okay, we're, you know, our mission's changed. We're going to, I don't know, spread the gospel or something. Dude, my chapstick. Okay. Well, you heard it here, folks. It looks like Saul has become Paul and his horse has found chapstick. And yes, it has been a great, it has been a great day in news and, th and it is so exciting. Any last words for our viewers? Uh, pfft, not really, man. Just a uh, big voice, uh, big light, big change, kind of turn the leaf over. That's pretty much it, man. But uh, sorry, I can't see anything. Oh, were, were you blinded too on the road? Oh. Could you use him to, Annie, to put your scabs off? Uh, no, no, no. I, I found these over there, these sunglasses. It's just really dark in here. So. Oh. Are we shocked? I couldn't get this off in 15 seconds? No. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're talking about Paul. Uh, it's a pretty incredible story about Paul. Uh, he, it, it was amazing that he was blinded by a light and he stepped into the light and he became a Christian. He actually I mean, he has an incredible story, and we are going to hear his amazing story from a speaker tonight. Did you love hearing from Hannah last night? She was incredible. She's incredible. Can't see my face. Um, well, tonight, we have another speaker in store. Uh, his name is Jeff Walling, and I, and I want to give you, I want you guys to give him a great round of applause for Jeff Walling. Welcome him out here. You, uh, you weren't dressed like that when I saw you earlier today. Uh, yeah, it's a programming issue. Okay. Good, yeah, good. it's. I didn't so it's, live. It's kind of a Halloween kind of kind of look. Though. I asked yeah, Jonesy sorry. to help me with scripture, oh, and okay. he didn't think about the buffering time. <laughs> are you guys having a good time here? I mean, they are an amazing crowd. Mallory, I got here, and they're amazing. It had been a while since I've been here, but I mean, like. The, the, the water slide and oh. the blob and oh, the zip everything. line and the, and the spaghetti, I mean, or pasta, oh. it's just, it's all epic. Who enjoyed dodgeball? I saw a dodgeball game going Yeah. On. Good deal. Yeah. Man, this is. Oh, I, man. It was, I flew all the way from California, from Malibu, California to get here, and it's Beautiful. so gorgeous. Who's man. from California here? Do we have any California? All right. California, represent. Do we have anybody next to California? Anybody from Arizona here? <laughs> yes. Wow. Mallory, the entire state of Arizona is here. I that know. Is just it's awesome. a big state. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big state, and it's all here for us. And there's Colorado. My goodness. I bet there's even people from New Mexico who are here. All right. 
It's nuts. We're in their state. We are. And they showed up. <laughs> and they did it for us. So it's crazy. It is... Well, and you're from California, and I want them to get to know you, and so I thought, and you to get to know them. So I thought okay. we'd play a game. I, I'm up for a game. Do I and... need a horse costume as no, well? No, you don't. Good. That's such good this news. This game, but you do need a well-trained eye, because this game is called Who Done It. So I need you to be a detective, okay? Okay, detective, okay. You know how to look at a junior high student and really just kind of, you know, you just look them up and get out and you're like, yeah, I know. I, 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 was, I was a youth pastor for uh, yeah, a long time. Yeah, you so, just put okay. your thumb on them. All right, got, like, it, yeah. got it, Okay, so we asked this morning for, for some junior high students to admit to some things. Say, yeah, I did that. I've done it. So you had like confession booth yeah, yeah, or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We said, okay, all right. we said Who's done this in the last 24 hours? Who's done this in the last year? Okay. And who can do this? Okay, okay. And now what we want you to do is we want you to line these students up. We're going to give you three students, and we want you to say, I think this student done that. I think this student done that. Mm. You think he could do it if I gave you three random students from the crowd? You know what? You think he could do it? I'll give it a rootin' tootin' try you there, Horsey. Yes. Okay. Trigger. Okay. Okay. Well, well. Well, we already called you up this morning, okay? Because if I said, who has thrown up, and you raised your hand, then you told on yourself, you goobers, okay? So, uh, Reagan, can I get my first volunteers out here? <laughs> Thank you, my first three. Oh, look at these first three. Ooh, ooh, look at these first okay. three. Okay. Look at these first three lads. Hi, okay. my, my name's Jeff, what's your name? Tony, nice to meet you. Tony. Complete with red paint. Okay, Tony, I want you to look right out there. Look right out there, because I want them to get a good look, too, because they're going to help me determine. All right, Tony, and what grade are you in? Eighth grade. Eighth grade. Okay, and next to Tony is? Ethan. Ethan. And the microphone might not be on, but that's okay. We'll just, I'll lean in. Ethan, tell me. I assume you're a senior in high school? No, I'm in sixth grade. Sixth grade. Okay, all right. So we have uh, Tony and Ethan, the sixth grader, and... You are? Finn. Finn. Okay, where are you from, Finn? Arizona. From Arizona, and what grade are you in? Seven. Okay, so everybody say Finn, Finn. Ethan, Finn. Tony. Okay, right, we so have now, our three suspects. Now your goal is, who of ten, ten Finny, <laughs> ten Finny and Owen. <laughs> Tony, Ethan, and Finn. I'm dyslexic. Okay. Who of these three? Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't put your horse back in towards them. Let's keep okay. it around this way. There you go. Okay. It's sorry. Yeah. <laughs> who, who do you think, and put are, them in order. You are order. mooning the audience, please. Can I don't just... know what to do. There you go. Okay, good. Okay, who do you think, put them in front of the ones you think, okay, what am I supposed oh, to do? Oh, wait a minute. One of do these this? three threw yes. up? Put them in front of each screen. Who okay. do you think threw up? One of them has thrown up in the last 24 hours. One of them has called a parent, and one of them ha has not brushed their teeth and or hair or both. Wow. Look out this way, guys. Yeah, you got to do it quick. There's three All rounds, right, on the count Jeff. Of three, we'll be I here want you till to forever. Take a deep breath. Front row, get ready. Now breathe out. Which one do you think? Did you breathe out? You're not breathing, Tony. Okay, give it oh, one more shot. It's Tony for sure. Oh, wow. Okay, all right. Can you breathe out for me? <laughs> Glad you're here, Finn. Give it a shot. Hmm, that might be some minty freshness there. Um, let's see. I'm going to say that the person who did not brush their teeth. Yeah, Ethan, I think your friends are giving you up. Let's see. All right, stand okay. right over here, Don't Ethan. Don't tell him Instead yet, Instead of Ethan. didn't brush my teeth. Stand on this green strip and of who tape. Yep. Threw up. Who puked? Who blew their cookies? You're on threw a clock, up. Jeff. It's a 50-50. me in the eye. This right here. You ready? Come on. I think you may have thrown up. Look into his soul and decide. Actually... I know. I happen to know that it was you. Hey, that we met up. on night one. How yeah, do you know? I don't know. Yeah, the mint may have covered it. Okay, I'm going to say you called your mom and dad, and right over here, Tony, I'm going to say that you threw okay, up. Okay. Okay. Would you guys now. think this is right? Okay. Okay. What? 
Who now. do you think threw up? Okay. Okay. Now. now. Maybe I didn't do it right. Let's see. Raise your hand if you threw up in the last 24 hours. Ah! Yeah! What did you throw Tony, up? Tony, Tony, give it here. Give us, well give done. him the mic, Jeff. What did you throw up? Why'd you throw up, Tony? I had, I had, I had too much candy. Too much too, candy. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I didn't know there was any such thing as too much candy. What kind of candy did you have? Uh, give I, him the mic, Jeff. I had gummies, I had a lot of gum. Got Jolly Ranchers gum and I don't even know. I had I had a lot of chocolate. Oh, Subway. chocolate, yeah. You had what? Subway. Subway. Oh yeah. Okay, yeah. Wow, that's oh, a toxic Subway. mix. Subway. All right. Tony, we're glad. Where where were you when you threw up, dude? In my dorm. Oh, was anybody else there? No, by yourself. Oh. Were you uh, by the um, commode? The <laughs> toilet? No. No. Where, were you just like all over the room? No, I ran to the sink. Ran to the sink. Okay, all right. Well done, dude. Well, well done. If you give him the microphone. Would you like to talk into this? Well. Like I say. <laughs> okay, let's give Tony who threw up a big round of applause. Okay. Who called home? All right. If you end up being smothered by that, we're all gonna feel really bad. We just watched you, okay. Okay, let's see. Did he get it right? Did you call a parent? Who called their parents? And who didn't brush their teeth? I didn't brush my teeth. No! Nice, you good didn't job. brush your okay. teeth. Look at nice, this. Boys. Look, will you get yourself Good job. Out of you can go ahead well and you can take a seat. Give me my let's next round. Let's give all these three a let's big round of applause. Speedy. Well done. Speedy. Reagan, send them out to me, Jeff. I'm sorry. Well done. No. I just, I'm sorry that I, I judged you for not holding it up. That's okay. That's I all know. right. I, you know, I, I normally I would say, hey, come see me after and I'll give you some candy, but I don't want anybody else to throw no, up. No, I so, don't want yeah. that. Reagan, send me the next Will you not get <laughs> I forgot. Okay. Now, who among you... Who among these gals? Let's get your names. Okay. Names, you are? Lily. Lily. Where are you from, Lily? Colorado. Colorado. And? Paisley. Pardon me? Paisley. Paisley is from? Arizona. Arizona. And? Matthew. Matthew is from? Arizona. 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 Okay. okay. This one. So we have, we have Paisley? No. no. Lily. Lily. Paisley and Matthew. Okay. Matthew. Now, which one each was in a school play, made all AIDS, A's, or plays a woodwind in the band? In this past school year, who done it? Was in the school play, wow. all A's, was playing a woodwind okay, this is back up. in the school play. All right, go. I'm gonna, I'm this gonna ask you, I, I just, well, this, now this one does to it. Hey, will I work? Okay. Lily, I'm gonna ask you a question here. Here we go. Lily, Paisley. Uh, look me in the eye. Um, do you really enjoy school? Eh. Eh? Eh. eh. Okay. I like the social part. Oh, okay, all right, okay, all right. And uh, Paisley. Do you, uh, do you do any dancing, or you like a, you know? Okay, you're mm. giving hands. Che you do cheer, well done, that's awesome. Okay, mm. Matthew, Matthew, my boy. If I, um, if I had a, a piece of sheet music, would you be able to tell a quarter <laughs> note from a sixteenth note? Yes. No, no, no. You could. Okay. Don't give him right. anything. Okay. Don't give him anything. No hints. Okay. Okay. Now, now set set them where you think they would go. Okay. Okay. I I could be wrong, but Matt, I just pegged you for the woodwind guy. Would okay. You woodwind, get over there. Take a stand over there. Read the notes. Giving him. Clues. Okay. 
And I wonder, I wonder if, Lily, you were the one that was in the school play. Could you like the social? No, or, so I, it, look at me. All right, Lily, go over there. I feel like I didn't do as well. Which makes you, congratulations, our straight A student okay. who is right here. Okay. Okay, hold it, just a sec. All right, if you think I got them right, as I hold my hand over them, give me a yeah. What about this one? All right, okay, all right, we'll see. Now, who do you want to really, you really feel strong about? Yeah, I thought. Matthew, so. it is so good to meet you. Where are you from? Arizona. Arizona, I want you to look right out there, Matthew. And I want you, if you play a woodwind instrument, what I need you to do, Matthew, is to raise your hand and tell us what kind. I don't play woodwind. Oh! No! Do you play any right. kind of instrument? Yeah. Raise your hand if you play a woodwind instrument. Oh, oh, it's you! The cheerleader who also plays a flute. A flute, I should have guessed. Flute. Well done. Oh wow. So Matthew, mm. what do you do? No, wait, 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 oh, wait. Oh, wait, oh, wait. oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Here, you can okay, you can. Okay, okay. so he doesn't play a woodwind instrument, <laughs> and she does. So that means that really the question is: if you were in a school play, please raise your hand. Oh, nice. What was, oh, the, A's, what was the play? I love Good plays. Job. What was the play? It was like a different version of Alice in Wonderland. Oh, really? And who did you play? Uh, I was the Cheshire Cat. The Cheshire. Okay, all right. To be the Cheshire Cat. Look out there, Adam. Give us your big Cheshire Cat grin. Oh, you already had it on. She did okay, it. all right. She's Good doing deal. It. Give Good all, job. Give Good all three job. of these a big round of applause. Okay. Now, you may be dismissed. You have to do this so quick. Okay. This is because we've already called them up, so we can't send them home sad. Oh, no. Okay. But we All have right. to do this fast. Fast, fast, fast. Okay, right, last round. Reagan, send them <coughs> to me. Everybody give up for our backstage manager, Reagan. She's the best. She's so great. Okay. Who can, without clues, without just look at them? I don't even want you to know their name yet. All right, no talking. No talking. I want you to look at them. Who can do a backflip? Who can say the ABCs in reverse? And who knows sign language? Who? Yeah. 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 Put them there. Okay. Sign language, right okay. over there. To the line. ABCs in reverse. Okay, here we go. Right here. I like this. Because your I name like is? This. This. I like this. Josiah. Josiah I, Josiah, I know for sure that right now if I said Josiah, I'll hold your glasses. No, 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 we can't have him do a backflip on this not grass. No, no, you're not gonna pressure me into I... a lawsuit. You're not gonna do it. Hey, I hey, know hey, hey. me. No, 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 we're not gonna make a horse's bottom out of you. Okay, all right, Josiah. If you would, please, if you can do a backflip, raise your hand. Yes! Yeah! Now, Josiah, I hope you are truthful because everybody's going to see you and you're going to do backflips only on grass. Okay, Josiah, tell you what. Let me, let me, hold, your, let me hold your glasses. No way. Just, just do a, a front no. roll somersault. Just a somersault. No. Just, just, just a somersault. Josiah, dude, that is awesome. I'm really glad that, that, that you is can't, the coolest somersault I have lie, ever Josiah. seen. That was epic somersault. You didn't prove me wrong in the moment. And uh, your name is? Trinity. Trinity. If you can do sign language, please raise your hand. <laughs> what? 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 Who can do sign language here? Me. But you can't raise your hand? <laughs> that must make it very hard when you're doing your sign language. Oh. How do you say me in sign language? Um, I could probably do a few things like that, and then 
Yeah. Me. And, and okay. How about if you just walked up to somebody and wanted to say, how are you? How would you say that in sign language? You could also, like, just spell it out. Yeah, but if you don't spell it out, is there a way to just go, That's like, how you doing? Uh, I don't, I'm, I'm not that good yet. I oh, okay. Do, right. but I love it. I love it. What's your favorite sign? Like, a pe uh, like love you or it love like you. Yes. Ooh, what's that? Dumb. Dumb. Okay. <laughs> What well, did you learn at Mix? Know if somebody does they taught me to you. sign or, or for stupid. dumb. Right. Okay, or she, stupid. Or she knows stupid. dumb or stupid. Yeah, my Okay, dumb. done. Which Thank means you. Thank you. What was your name? Peyton. Peyton? We're all going to give you a footnote. We all know that. We're going to give you a footnote. We all know that now. If you'll Thank you. You'll all be Peyton. very, very okay. still and listen closely. You will now hear the ABCs in reverse. D Y X W V U T S R Q P O. N M L K J I H G F E D C B A. Woo! That's amazing. That's incredible. Oh, none of my kids can do them forwards, much less backwards. Well That's done. amazing. Give Thank all you three of these all. a big round of all applause. All amazing talents. <laughs> Thank you. Well done. Thank well you. Done. Josiah, awesome sauce. Thank you, Josiah. Yeah, yeah, thank, thank you, Trinity. You. You're talented forever. All right. Thank you, Jeff. Well, that thank was you, your Mallory. sermon. We learned a lot. That was wonderful. Well, now, we're going to go into a... It looked quick on paper. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't realize that's what they were laughing at earlier when I picked up the mic. Is that no, my back, just don't. My back just. legs go up. It's funny. Anyway, we're going to go into a time of intermission because i got to get out of this. And we're going to prep and we're going to come back and we're going to worship and hear Jeff share our uh, story for tonight. Oh, it's a open, great story, too. Open up the word. Such um, a good but story. But we're going to take 10 minutes uh, as wow. our cowboys play a riveting game of pool. Remember, you can't leave the building, but you can leave this room and... Uh, Get your wiggles out. We'll see you in 10 minutes. Please, no, no, please back off stage. Just back. <laughs> Big old scratch, boy. All right. Make your play. Anywhere over here. You play by any rules, boy? I don't know what rules are, Tom. That much. <clears throat> How you like here? You ready to get some? She had to use sticks like these. For what? To get us kids moving around the house, up out of bed, start pulling. You know, she whack you with a stick? Well, yeah, just so we, we'd start going out pulling up turnips and onions and things like that so uh, we could eat. But I thought we, you ate toes, Tom. Well, when we ran out of the onions, yes.
up tonight? Sing them all back, sing them all back. Let's go! No spark, I call you healer. You can mend any broken heart, I call you faithful father. You finish everything you start, and my soul was made to respond. I've known you by
Excuse me. Woo, man, can we give it up for the band one more time? <laughs> Epic. Epic. Hey, 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 hey. Glad you guys are all here. And if you'll raise that up for me, I would so much appreciate that. Glad you're here. So I, um, I need to tell you that I am really, really happy that it's the season it is. Now, I know there are some people out there who have moms and dads. How many out there have a mom and dad? Yeah, I thought so. Okay, so I know there's some people out there whose parents really love the fall. Your mom is like, oh, I want to go see the leaves changing. We love doing that. Others really love the spring when the flowers are coming out. There's some people that go, I can't wait for the snow in the winter. I want to go skiing, snowboarding. Right, 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 right. Sorry. I, you know, fall's okay, winter's okay, spring's okay, but I love the summer. Because summer means a couple of things to my family. We have a tradition every year. In fact, just last weekend, the uh, weekend before that, Memorial Day weekend, we went camping. I love camping, I have to confess. Every now and then you just need to be miserable on purpose. And so this is, this is my wife and me. We're camping up north in the Redwoods. And it was so beautiful. Let me just show you one picture I took of the California coastline. I mean, it's just gorgeous, right? Just epic. The only problem, of course, is that camping almost always means road trip. Oh, yeah. And that brings back some memories that I need to do some therapy about. Because when I was a kid, a road trip meant traveling from Southern California to Texas, where my father's family lived. Now that is a two-day car drive with three kids in the back seat. And this is back in the day. I, 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 listen, go with me. I want to take you back on a mental time travel. And we're going to go back to a time, wait for it, a time before earbuds. A time before cell phones. A time, wait for it, before CD players. Before the internet, before streaming, I want to show you a picture of the dashboard of a car that was very much like the one three kids, two days, and that was what we called a radio. Oh, this one was a cool one because you had buttons you could punch. And my dad had preset the buttons. One button was news. Punch that button and hands, hey, hey, there's a, a, a fire is happening here. There was a, you know, a problem at the bank, you know, blah, blah, blah. Another button, country western music. But I don't mean like Travis Tritt. I mean like Loretta Lynn. Whang, I'm so sorry. I mean, oh, as kids, my dad loved country western music. My mother had set one of the buttons to a classical music station. I know, I know. And it was a constant battle with a back seat for the last two buttons. My sister and I would sneak in and set them to a rock and roll station, you know, or a pop music station. Yeah, exactly. Now, I'm just curious, how many of you, if you were setting the stations in the old days and you could set them for a performer, actually today your playlist, how many would say, if I'm going on a road trip, there's going to be a lot of uh, Justin Bieber uh, on my playlist? Okay, all right. Okay, okay. How many of you would say, if you were setting your playlist, there'd be a fair amount of the Beatles on your playlist? Any Beatles fan? Okay. Any, uh, okay, all right, all right, all right. My wife and I would have one button on our playlist set for James Taylor. We really enjoy. Oh, look at just a second. Every wrinkled person in this room went, yeah, that's right, James Taylor. You go, JT. And then, of course, there's a, there's a new, a younger writer. So I, I won't be surprised if you haven't heard of her. Her name is Taylor Swift. Okay. 
So. <laughs> I want you to imagine. Okay. You were just going to pretend for half a second. Ready? Look at me. Now I want you to glance at the person on your right and say, you're my little brother or sister, whichever it is. On the other side, you're my little sister, you're my little brother. The three of you are in the car. You like different kinds of music. And the dad says, here's your cue. Hey, y'all, it's your turn. What should we listen to? Unfortunately, that is exactly what the car sounded like going across the California desert and into Arizona and into New Mexico and into the edge of Texas and then the middle of Texas and then the other middle of Texas. And we just, it was just like yelling and fighting because we all wanted one thing. The shout was, it, it said different words, but it meant the same thing. I want control. Let's try saying it together. Here we go. I want control. Now, what we didn't realize that we had stumbled into is we had stumbled into an age-old battle, a battle that this week in many ways is about. It is a battle about control. Actually, if you want to be technical about it, I'm a professor at a university, so every now and then I get to use big words. It, thank you. It is about autonomy. All right, everybody sit up straight. <clears throat> Looked re look really intelligent. Okay, good. Some of you, very good. Okay, work on it, sir. Okay, here we go. All right, look at me. <laughs> look at me. And I want you to say in your most intelligent voice, rather quietly, <clears throat> this is about autonomy. Here we go. This is about autonomy. Very good, because autonomy is the word when you go home and your mom says, well, what'd you learn at mix? You can tell her, mother, this, say it with me, this is about autonomy. And she'll say, what's that? And you can say, I forgot. No, you can say, autonomy is the ability to make your own choices. Babies, zero autonomy, right? Because babies, we, you know, my, I have a little granddaughter. She is now like three months old. It's so exciting. Yes. But when we go someplace, we have a baby bucket. And her parents strap her in the bucket, and then they strap it in the car, and then they take it in the restaurant. And wherever they go, it's just this whole car seat baby bucket thing. And it's so great. You just put her, and she stays. It's wonderful. But... That child is going to grow out of that car seat and is going to grow out of the bumper, the, the booster seat. And before you know it, they're going to be a, wait for it, junior high school student. And when she hits middle school or junior high school, she is going to fight for autonomy. I want to go here. I want to do this. I want to do that. And then she might even come to a she might even come to a mix or might even come to a church camp and somebody will tell a story, a story that takes autonomy all the way back. Well, autonomy, you know where it began? It began in the Garden of Eden. It began with Adam and Eve. It began with them and God saying, "Listen, this whole place is yours." enjoy it, eat the fruit, all that's good. There's just one thing. Don't do. There's a tree in the middle of the garden. That fruit will mess you up. So just don't eat the fruit. Trust me, mess you up. Don't eat the fruit. Adam and Eve, of course, like all human beings, eat this fruit, eat that fruit, look around, and then they go, huh. Actually, it's not fair just to blame them. Because there was one other person in the garden. Well, not a person, a thing, right? Yes, exactly. There is this snake in the garden. And Adam and Eve are there. And the snake sneaks up to the tree and sees the lady. Now, understand, Eve had everything. I mean, she had no natural enemies. As best we can tell, she did not age. 
She had the only man on earth for her, literally. She never woke up one day saying, I should have married the other fella. I mean, it was just Adam. It was just Adam and her, right? The perfect man for her. And she never had one day where she said, what will I wear tomorrow? Because she had no clothes. So here is, here is Eve in the garden, everything going for, and the snake has the temerity to say, psst, psst, hey, hey, naked lady. Would you like to have it better? And she says, better? Better? He says, yes, you can have it better if you'll just eat from that tree. Oh, God told us not to eat from the tree. And he said, autonomy. No, he didn't say it, but in his head and in her head, they were thinking, everybody whisper, autonomy. Yeah, he was saying, oh, listen, I know that's what he said, but you know what? You're a grown-up girl. You can do what you want. In fact, if you did take one step outside of God's will and just have that, <gasps> You'll be like God. And Eve, bless her heart, she's looking and it looks good. And she thinks, man, it probably tastes good. And man, I'd like to have it. It's just one step. It's just a little tiny bit of, whisper it, autonomy. Yes, I'm going to do what I want to do. And oh my goodness. Eve had no idea that 2,000, 3,000, 10,000, figure whatever you want on the timeline, that a million years later we would be here going, most of the problems that we face with the word nevertheless have to do with autonomy. With me saying, but I want to do it my way, and then we come to an event like this. Or our moms and dads take us to church, and we say, oh yeah, we're singing Jesus songs. And some preacher like me gets up and says, let's read some scripture together. Let's read what Paul said in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20, the theme for our week. Let's see if we can say the verse together. I have been, can we read it together? I have been with Christ and I no longer... Oh, just a sec, just a sec. I'm going to ask when you get to nevertheless, you really give it to me. Here, I'll do the white, you do the orange. I've been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live. Christ lives in me. And this life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And we say, yes, I want to do that. I want to have that. And he says, the problem is, wait a minute, if I do that, what happens to my, whisper it, autonomy. Yeah, because being crucified with Christ means that I have died. I have given up, as it were, my autonomy. I mean, I still have it because I'm making the choice. I know it's a conundrum. But here I am saying, okay, God, I know that I could choose to go do that or go do that, but I want to trust in Jesus. And so, here, I, I want to give you this part of my autonomy. I want to turn my life over to Christ. In fact, God so wanted us to know that this was not just a little thing. He wanted us to know this is like dying. And so, as part of this moment, this, this process, this experience... When people who first heard about Jesus and they said, yes, I want to follow Jesus. Oh my goodness, what should we do because we've sinned? Peter said, well, repent and be baptized, every one of you. You know, based on your faith, believe in Jesus. And they said, I believe. And so they said, all right, I want to baptize you. Well, what's baptized? Baptized, Paul says, is taking you and putting you under the water just like you were dead. Yeah, it is a burial in water. Now don't be confused, the water doesn't save you. The guy dunking you doesn't save you. It is Jesus Christ who saves us. Can I get a oh yeah? Okay, all right. So, so God says, I want you to understand that at this moment you are dying to yourself. I've been crucified with Christ, as Paul says. You're dying to yourself, but you're also going to be raised to walk in new life. And here's where we run into the problems. We get raised to walk in new life. Okay, I'm a Christian now. I'm a Christian now. God, here's my autonomy. All yours there and all yours. But, 
oh my word. He said that that movie showed, oh my goodness, well, my parents would, my parents would never let me watch it, but everybody's asleep. I've got my iPad, my autonomy. Yeah, I know, I know. See, and here we are wrestling against this, this challenge. And then Satan says, oh yeah, that's right, because that's what your, your spirituality, your, your salvation is, is based on. It's do you do good stuff? And, okay, let me, I, I just need to take a minute and just do my own backflip here. Not quite, but I, I need to make this clear. When we think that we can earn this grace, this gift, this forgiveness, this good news. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that we should have eternal life. When we think that we earn it, we have lost it. Because earning it is something we cannot do. Well, if I try really hard, dude, let me make it clear. It's like a, um, where are my jumpers? I, I, I talked to three guys. I talked to three guys. Come here, my three guys. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Brad, if you're back there, Brad, come on out, dude. Hi, tell me your names again. You are Caleb, Caleb and, and Levi. Levi. Okay, all right, Brad. Hey, I'm gonna, I want you to stand right here, and I want you to hold the candy way up high, as high as you can. Okay, now, guys, what I'm going to ask you to do, I'm going to start with you. Uh, excuse me, right here. Just, we yell all three of them. Okay, in fact, here, I'm going to swap you two right here. There you go. Okay, all right, height already. Come here. You're going to, oh, if you jump right now, you can totally get that, can't you? Yeah, okay, all right. Uh, help Brad. Okay, all right, here we go. Here we go. What I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to leap into the air. Turn this way because we want to see this happen. You're going to leap into the air. A little higher, Brad. And, okay. And you're just going to grab the candy. Okay? All right? On the count of three, because you, you told me you could jump, and I saw you jump. Here we go. Everybody count with me. One, two, three. Oh, oh, man, you were, you were stinking close. I'm going to give you one more shot. Here we go. One, two, three. Oh, man, oh, man, so close. All right, let, me, let me see what happens. Let me see what happens. Okay, 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 okay. All right, are you ready? This is it. You, I know, I, we believe in you. Are you. I saw you jump. Right here, dude, right here. Here we go. All right, give me the count of three. Here we go. Oh, oh, he was, oh, man, you were like, whoo. You, you want to try one more time? Sure, sure, here we go, ready. Oh, okay. Now, I have seen this guy jump. This guy, look, look he's already stretching. Don't let him yank you off that stool, okay? Because the, the, the stuff will come off really easy. It'll, it'll pull right off. You ready? Drum roll in your laps. One, two, three. Oh, 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 one more time, one more time. Okay, here we go. Drum roll on your laps. One, two, three. Oh, dude. Oh. Now, three things are happening right now. Number one, you guys are going, well, he jumped higher than the other two, you know. They were shorter. And the other, here's the deal, guys. None of them even touched the candy. It's not because they're not good jumpers. Dude, step over here. It's not because they're not good jumpers. Can we all give them a huge round of applause for amazing jumps? Hey, fives. Awesome, awesome. Head that way. See me right after. We got some candy for you. All right, good. Go right down there. All right, awesome. But it's, it's not that they're bad jumpers. It's that no one who is their size could possibly do that. In fact, I could get any adult in the room and have them come right here. And we'll just hang the candy off of the ceiling. None of us could do it. But do you know what trying to work your way to heaven is like? It's like the candy is on the moon. And we're trying to jump. That's what you call stupid. Uh, pardon, that's, that's your mom, some of your mom, mama don't let me call stupid. My mom didn't either, so we use ignorant. Okay, that's just, everybody lean to a person next to you and say, that's just a poor choice. It's just a poor choice. 
Tell the person on the other side, it ain't gonna happen. Tell the person behind you, it's impossible. Except that, that the scripture says it actually is possible. How can I jump all the way to the moon? You can't, but praise God, Jesus did. And because Jesus did, we get the reward we could never reach. We get the joy we could never grab. We get the forgiveness we could never get a hold of. We get heaven. Because he says, listen, short stuff, I know you can't do it, Jeff. So stop thinking you're going to jump high enough and get it. Well, then, Lord, what am I supposed to do? Just stand on the side? He said, no, no, no. Don't forget what your part is. Your part is simply to say, God, thank you for Jesus. And I want to die to myself. I, 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 want, to, I want to give up this autonomy by saying, I'm going to live by the Spirit of Jesus. Here's, here's the way one guy describes it. He, he just take a look. He describes it this way. Paul does. So I say, and can I get the yellow words? Can I get the ladies to read the yellow word and the guys to read the blue? And can I get the, the adults to do the green? Okay, all right. So girls, your word is spirit. Let me hear you say spirit. spirit. Excellent. Guys, <laughs> your word is flesh, okay? Yes, thought that would be easy. Parents, how easy. Your word is conflict, okay? You, you know how that works, okay? And mom and dad, when you say conflict, I want you to stand up, put your hands in the air like this, and say conflict, okay? Let's try. I think the, I think, I think, I think the, uh, the sponsors may need practice. Here we go. First, girls, your word is Good. Okay, only it's the Holy Spirit, so it's a wonderful thing. So let's make it sound really positive. It is the... Oh, very good. Guys, your word is... Sponsors, parents, your word is... Oh, wow. You were doing that in the, in the rooms last night. All right, knock it off. Okay, all right, here we go. So here's, <laughs> here's what Paul writes. We got to hurry. So I say, walk by the... And you will not gratify the desires of the for the desires what is contrary to the and the what is contrary to the they are in absolutely that's that that's that war that is inside of you that's that war that is going on when you're at the store and one of your friends says, oh, dude, I love Twix. I love Twix. And as he's walking by, he just reaches over and grabs some and stuffs them in his pocket and keeps walking. And you're like, are you going to pay for that? He says, they don't even notice. They don't care. Get whatever you want. There's a conflict. Your, all the guys say flesh. Oh, yeah. Your flesh is going, oh, my word. Oh, man. Red vines. Oh, my goodness. Twizzler. Skittles. Skittles. The big bag. The big. I could stick it in my. I could put it. The big. And while your flesh is doing that, ladies, the. Yeah. Is saying, excuse me, question in the back. Who's in control here? I thought you said you were a Christian young person. I thought you said you believed in Jesus. And the flesh says, yeah, but it's Skittles. And the spirit says, yeah, but it's Jesus. Whisper. Autonomy. Oh man, that's where this battle is. And Paul finishes by saying, but if instead you are led by, everybody say it this time, led by the That means the spirit is the one who punches the buttons. The Spirit is the one who says, no, no, no. I know he cussed at you, but you're not about to cuss him back. I know she said something so mean, but you're not going to. I know you want to lie right now, but you're going to look at your mom and dad and you're going to tell them the truth because the Spirit is doing the leading. 
Okay. Reality check. Had a young man come to me at the back of an auditorium a while back and say, um, uh, Mr. Walling, uh, Jeff, and I said, yeah. He said, um, I really appreciate what you're talking about, about this, you know, trying to do the right thing, but I have always been this way. I cannot control. I just, I mean, I, I've been trying. I've been trying not, to, I've just stopped cussing. I'm trying to do it. And, and lying, I mean, I'm sorry. I've just, I can't hardly talk to my parents without lying. It's just like, it's just, I, I just, I can't. You don't understand. It's too hard for me to change. And I said, well, I can appreciate you wanting to, to believe that. And it is difficult. Hear me clearly. But I... Okay, this is a weird way to get here. But you and I, let's play a game for a second. All right? Raise your right hand. Say, I'm on the committee. Okay, you were all just put on the committee at your church to hire some new pastors. Okay? All right? Yeah, I know. Your youth minister needs to be looking for a new job. Okay, I'm going to show you two pictures. Which one of these two would get the job as your new youth pastor? This guy or this guy? Okay, all right. Okay, let me be clear. I've worked on some of those committees. You know which one of those two guys would probably get the job. All right, how about this one? You're going to hire a new senior pastor, a new preacher for your church. It's probably going to be this guy, right? Or is it going to be this guy? <laughs> okay. All right, one more, one more, one more. You're in charge of hiring a new revival evangelist. You're in charge. Hang on. You're in charge of hiring a guy who's going to travel around and is going to do gospel meetings and share Jesus. Would it be this guy or would it be this guy? Thank you. Okay, here, uh, take your right hand like this, and then take your left hand like this. And buckle your seatbelt because I'm about to tell you something. It's the last guy. You say, dude, he was a terrorist. Oh, oh no, no, no. Uh, listen, understand. Understand something. Whew. Let me see if I can tell this, just get through it. There was a wonderful, wonderful young man who um, loved Jesus with all his heart. He was sharing with friends. And um, wrong time, wrong place. Religious terrorist. Was part of a group that took him. And because he believed in Jesus. They, they beat him until he died. And, and, and one of the guys was kind of like sort of the cheerleader. He, he didn't actually get in it, but he, he was like, here man, hand, hand me your coat, I'll hold your coat, I'll hold your coat for you, go for it. That guy, that guy, was chosen by God. No, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Because some of you are going, wait a minute, I'm a little confused. Because if that's our new pastor, that's kind of scary. Um, let me just show you the text. The Bible says in Acts chapter 8, after they have killed Stephen and Saul approved of their killing him. I want you to watch what happens. Godly men, that is people who loved Jesus, they mourn, buried Stephen, and they mourn deeply for him. Everybody say, but. Saul began to, say it with me, yeah, that guy, I'm sorry, I don't mean to get mad, 
But God, every now and then, I'm thinking, what were in all, what in all that is holy were you thinking when you said, ha, ah, let's see. I want somebody to go all over the world and tell the gospel. Who will people listen to? How about that religious terrorist? And they picked him. They, God did. I'm sure the angels were like, uh, not so much. And God said, no, 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 this guy. We're going to so turn him around. I remember the horses told you the story. That he was going down the road and God, boom, hit him with a light. And they saw, why are you doing this? And Saul makes this 180, don't you, don't, she says to me, Jeff, don't you dare say, oh, it's too hard for me. Saul went from someone who hated Christians so much he wanted to kill him to someone who would say, I'll die so that you can hear about Jesus. I'll die so that you can know Christ. I'll, I'll die so that you can have a chance. I mean, it, 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 it just, boom, blows my mind. And when Saul makes this choice and becomes Paul, oh my word, he, he not only becomes this great preacher, he, has re he wrote more books in the New Testament than anybody else. Not only that, but he is considered behind Jesus the single most influential person in the entire history of Christianity. And if you're there about to go, yes, Paul, Paul, he's so great, he's so... No, no, no. Paul says, folks, you're missing the point. It's not that I did so good. In fact, here, let me let him use his language from the book of Corinthians. When he says, I don't even deserve. I don't even deserve to be called an apostle. I'm the least of all of them because I persecuted the church of God. I was out there hurting people. Uh-oh, here's another but Paul uses. In fact, this is Paul's big but. Probably shouldn't say it that way. This, this is an important but. Even that. I'm back to the horse thing. Here we go. When I point at you, you say but. Here we go. Because I persecuted the church of God. By the grace of God, I am what I am. Paul, what are you saying? He says, Jeff, dude, it's not me. It's not I work so hard. It's not I earned this. It's not I did so. No, no, no. Guess what I did? I just said, Jesus, I am a total mess. I, 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 I'm a mega mess. People say, oh, you know, God hates messes. No, no, no. Jesus loves messes. I think that's why they called him the Messiah, because he just loves messes. And he says, God, I'm a mega mess. And Jesus says, great, let's take your mess and we'll make it your message. We'll make it what you share with people. We'll make it the way you teach and preach. And so, so Paul says, by the grace of God, it's by the grace of God that I've done everything I've done. So we come to the moment tonight of you of you choosing, not of you saying, okay, God, I'm going to work really hard. <laughs> Actually, what you're going to say is, um, God, I'm a mess. Um, if you've never given your heart and life to Jesus, if, you, if you've never made that commitment, let me let you know, angels are on tiptoes. I assume they have toes. I'm just guessing, you know, because they have the wings. But angels are on tiptoes going, yes. Yes, this is the moment she's going to do it. Come here. He's, he's going to step out. God, I know my mom believes in you, and I know my dad believes in you, but, but I want to say tonight, I trust you, Jesus. And, and I'm a mess, and I can't fix it. So I want to, I want to give you the remote... <laughs> I want to give you control of the radio. I, I, I want to give you my autonomy. And I want to say, Spirit, lead me. Guide me. Show me what I need to do. And if you've never done that, oh my word, what a blessing awaits. People who have confessed his name and given their heart to Jesus, Christians in the room say, oh yeah? Oh yeah. Now, now understand, this, this, this is not a magic slot machine you pull and bingo, it's going to fall out. Because once you give yourself to him, he asks the question, who's in control? It's you. How about at school? You. 
How about when you're playing ball? You. How, how about with your language? You. How, how about when you're dealing with your mom and dad? Yeah. How about when somebody is mean to you? Yeah. How about when somebody's nice to you? Yeah. How about when you want to punch some? Yeah. How about when nobody's looking and you can put it in? Who's in control? Yeah. 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 And then there's those of us, oh, this is hard to talk about. There's those of us who've already done that. You said, yes, Jesus, you gave your life to him. You're baptized into Christ. Praise God. But that was a while back. And let's just be straight. Um, some of the folks I'm talking to now may not be 16 or 12. They may be 26 or 42. I mean, let's be real. People like us, sometimes we can get just into doing the motions thing. It's kind of like we're just... <laughs> Oh, I think I can tell this. Um, years ago, I had three sons, and about when Taylor was, uh, I don't know, seventh, and maybe Riley was uh, sixth or fifth, Spencer was just a little five-year-old. And uh, they got a brand new uh, Sega game, and they were so excited. And my office was just down the hallway from the playroom where they were, and so Spencer comes running down the hallway screaming, Dad, Dad, Dad. I said, what? They're not letting me play. And ooh, I was mad because this is a Christmas gift to all of them. So I went down the hallway and I said, boys, hey, guys, I told you, you have to, Dad, he can't. He's dying every time. Then let him die, but he gets his turn. His turn. So I go back down the hallway and I hear the music. And then screaming. Dad, Dad. I said, Spencer, they won't let me play. Spencer, did you just die? Yes, but they played for like 10 minutes. Okay, all right, so I walked down the hallway. Guys, this is not going to work. You have to let him play. We did. Each person plays till they die. No, 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 no. He gets to play for five minutes solid, and then you play, and then you play, and then he gets five. Dad, we can't. You want me to take it? Okay. I go down the hallway. I'm working on my lesson. It's a Saturday. And I hear, ding, 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 and then I looked at the controller. It wasn't plugged in. <laughs> and my oldest boy had a controller that was doing this. <laughs> and I looked at Spencer, who was like, Dad, look, look, look. And I looked at Taylor, who went, mm. <laughs> And I said, you're doing good, son. And I just walked out of the room. I know it's a twitch and not a switch and not a controller, but I just need to ask you, do you think for one stinking minute that we can fool God that way? That we can say, oh yeah, Lord, absolutely, okay. Do you think there won't be angels saying, Lord, how come every time you say stop, he just keeps going? How come every time you tell her kindness, she responds, Father, it's like your controller just isn't. Yeah. It's an okay game to go with a five-year-old. But if you've given your heart and life to Christ and then thought you could just pretend, God's not fooled. And you're just miserable. So you have an option tonight. Let's put the controller in his hands. I don't know whether you're struggling with regard to your language, your sexuality, with body issues. I don't know whether you're wrestling with integrity, but it's time. In fact, it's overtime for you to say, here it is, Lord. And I'm going to say a prayer, and Mallory is going to explain to you how you can do that. Don't, don't fake it. If you step out, 
If you respond, it's the best decision you'll ever make. But it's got to come from here and be given to him. Would you bow your head? Father, as we prepare for a moment of response, I just ask you to help every student in this auditorium, every adult, every sponsor, who's thinking about their life and their walk. First, I pray for those who have never given their heart and life to Jesus. I pray that they are right now saying, I, I want to do this. I, I've never been baptized. I've never committed myself to Christ. I, I, I want to do this. God, can you help me? Father, will you give that young man, that young woman, the courage to just walk up to the front tonight and step into the light? Father, I pray also for some of us who, who need a new start, who need a new beginning. God, for us, sometimes it's harder because we're, we're embarrassed. Somebody's going to say, what are you doing up there? I thought you were already Christian. But Father, may we stop worrying about what anybody else is thinking and just think about what you want from us. God, in this silence, I ask you to, to press that response button and give us a moment to say, okay, God, I'll do it your way. I've been crucified in Christ. Nevertheless, I live as you direct. Thank you, Jesus, for the chance to do this. And thank you, Father, for this moment where we can talk about how we're going to do it tonight. I pray in Christ's holy name. Amen. Mallory. Amen. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Everybody give up for Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. I love... Jeff's heart as a pastor, and as a Christian, and as a father, and, and everything he has done in his life for Christ, and what he has, what he has given, and what he has to give. You have a story to tell, and you have so much ahead of you. We've been talking about how we are dead, nevertheless. Christ is alive in us. And when he's alive in us, he changes the way we think. He changes the way we act, the way we live. I love the story of Saul to Paul because he was a killer of Christians and then he became one. And that's incredible because he became the author of many letters in the New Testament, and he is the author of the verse that we are focusing on this week. And the part of the verse we focused on our first day was that Christ loved us and he gave himself up for us. The second day we focused on that he was the son of God, that he was holy and he had all the authority. And today we're talking about how it's no longer that we live, we're dead. It's Christ that lives in us. And so maybe some of you, you might be thinking, I don't know, I, how does that happen? I, it's when we invite Christ to come and live inside of us. And you might be thinking, I don't know if I'm ready. Well, here's three questions you can think through. And we don't want to rush you in this decision because it's the most, in, most important decision you'll ever make in your life. So we don't want to rush you. And we do not want you to make this decision just because your friends are making it. That is, that is not why you need to make this decision. And these platforms, these are not going to save you. They're not. This is an experience. This is a moment and a memory that if you feel like this is something that you want to profess, that this is what you feel like you need to do to say, yes, I want to take a step in faith and step into the light. And I feel like I can say yes to all three of these questions. And I'm ready to accept Christ into my life. Maybe it is time to respond. So I'm going to walk you through these questions. So question number one, admit. Can you admit that you are a sinner and ask for forgiveness? The first step to becoming a Christ follower is admitting that you are a sinner and saying, yes, I've messed up. 
that I have put other things in the place of God. Like Jeff was saying, we've put other things, we've wanted that control. But do you also believe Jesus is who he says he is? Do you believe that Jesus died for your sins and God raised him from the dead? Do you believe that to be true? Not to be a story, not to be a fantasy, but do you believe it happened? Because if you can admit and believe and confess, confess that Jesus is Lord and submit to his authority in your life. And if you're ready to say yes to all three of those things, then you might be ready to respond. And if you are, we want to um, open this up. In our time of worship, we want you to stay uh, in your seats so we can create some room to move um, in the aisles. And so if you'll worship from your, from your seats, if uh, you feel prompted to want to come up and step into the light, just like Paul's story, he was blinded by the light and Jesus spoke to him and it changed everything. We are gonna have staff come up and they're going to lead you up one by one and allow you to step up on to one of these platforms. And now I know that in the real story, uh, Saul was blinded. Now, I don't wanna blind you. <laughs> uh, so everything in you, don't look down. <laughs> everything in you, uh, let's look to the truth uh, in the scripture but in the verse on the screen, and as you take uh, Hunter or our friend Jake's hand, will you be basked in light and know that no longer you live, but Christ lives in you? Will you step into the light and become a new person and say, yeah, I want that? If you want to respond, we want to open up this in our time of worship. And I'll ask this. We're going to stand and we're going to, you can line up down uh, the front aisles. But I first want to allow this time for anybody who's never made a decision to follow Christ. If you've followed Christ before, if you, if you are a Christian, but maybe you felt like you've been out of step with the Spirit and you want to you want to rededicate your life, that's amazing. And we want that. And we want you to come and experience this. If this is something you feel led to do, we want that. I'm going to come back out and I'm going to open that up for the room. But for right now, for those that maybe feel prompted to make this first time decision, we want to open this up and celebrate and hoop and holler. And when you hear this amazing sound, I want you to cheer. Because that's a boom and a bam for heaven. That someone has stepped into the light. So I'm going to welcome our band out. And our band is going to come and we are going to stand and we are going to worship. And we, we are going to celebrate that our God didn't stay dead. He didn't stay in that grave. He didn't let death win. So let's worship.
as we continue to, we'll be here all night. Let's just keep worshiping. Let's just keep doing this. our hands out and say thank you Jesus thank you Jesus for these decisions thank you Jesus and we declare this we know this to be true so we sing together with all that we have we sing this I lift my hands up lay my whole life down my whole life down for you thank you Jesus I lift my hands up lay my whole life down my whole life now is for you. I lift my hands up, lay my whole life down, my whole life down for you. 
Nós temos que estar pronto.
need to give God praise for what's happening right now. And I think it's appropriate that we do one ever, another very powerful thing, even as these celebrations, even as these U-turns are taking place. Let's do this. We've been singing about it. Let's talk to God about it. If you would, would you just raise your hand? Would you just raise your hand? And I'm going to ask you to pray some things. You pray it quietly, whisper it in whatever way you want to. Father, as these students step up, as we hear that awesome sound, God, we praise your name for what's happening. But Father, we also, we want to pray for these students. So first, God, will you help us as we just each lift up a silent prayer to you for the ones who for the first time have said, I believe in Jesus. Father, will you hear us as we right now, all over this auditorium, whisper our, our prayers for them. We pray for their tomorrow. We pray for their faith. We pray for their next steps. Father, we pray for their families when they go home. We pray for friends at school they'll want to share with. And God, we pray for times when they will be tempted. Will you give them courage and strength power because as we said tonight we can't jump that high so Holy Spirit we ask that you be with them, empower them guide them and as Jesus prayed lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil God we praise you for those who have made these first time commitments tonight receive our praise God for those students who have done that now, God, we lift the other hand. We, we put a hand in the air on behalf of those who are stepping up right now. Praise you. Praise you. We pray those who have said, I need to start again. Oh, thank you that you're the God of new beginnings. The God of new starts. So, Father, right now, we lift our hands and we pray about these brothers and sisters. We pray first off, God, that you would let them deeply know inside they are forgiven in Jesus Christ. That you receive them back like the father who ran to the prodigal and said, I love you. I love you. And Father, we want to pray right now for their friends. Friends who will encourage them friends who will stand by them, friends even now who are excited they're taking this step. Father, we want to pray for their families and churches back home who will be ready to receive them and hear the story of a new beginning, of them saying, yes, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Father, we praise you for that. And Lord, we want to pray into the future. We want to pray in the in weeks and months and years to come for others that they will share with, that they will talk to Jesus about, and then that they will talk to about Jesus. Father, we pray that folks who will step into the light because of these believers who tell someone, who will tell someone, who will tell someone until Jesus finally comes again. And thank you, Holy Spirit, that you will guide them and help them to do that. We pray this, giving thanks and glory and honor to you for these first-time commitments and for these renewals. And in all these things, we say praise you, Jesus Christ, praise you, Holy Spirit, praise you, Heavenly Father, and in Jesus' name, we all say, Amen. Give it up for God. Let's Amen. just give it up for God. We are going. This is amazing. This is incredible. We love.
God, that this is the, God has prepared an amazing night. And we are going to have the, we're going to have one of these in the room to make decisions and keep going. We're going to do one more song. We're going to talk about how the battle belongs to him and him alone. And we're going to continue to worship and then we're going to be dismissed into small groups and we're going to celebrate these decisions and have good, amazing conversations of praise to him. Let's keep worshiping.